Hi, Lindy Goodall here from Lindy G Embroidery. In a previous video, I showed you how to piece these blocks together using a piece-as-you-go technique. In this video, I'll show you how to do the inking. And as I mentioned in the other video, these are not pieced blocks. These are inked. So that's how I was able to get the look of perfect piecing and perfect quilting. So originally, I wanted to do a quilt like this. And I'll show you my inspiration. This is a quilt that I've had hanging on my wall and it's very old and quite worn but notice that we have these giant blocks and really it's just made of this one block and it's half square triangle but the half square triangle is not a quarter triangle it's been pieced with a curve so we have this kind of pie shape here and when we put these blocks together we get this other design going on in here and you can see that that's exactly what I've done with this one. I have that same look. Now, I was trying to figure out, could I piece this in the hoop? If I pieced it, could I get it in the hoop and get my designs lined up? Because I knew that I wanted to use these designs from feathered quilt blocks. But I've quilted over piece quilts before, and it's darn hard to get those pieces lined up in the hoop once you've pieced them, because they start distorting. So I thought, well, that's probably not a good way to go. But lately I've been doing inked quilts, and here's, a, here's an example of an inked quilt. This is some vintage Easter bunnies, and these are all kind of multicolor red work designs, and I've just colored them in with ink. So I thought, well, shoot, I could just stitch those lines and then color them in and uh, figure that out. So let me show you some of my thought processes. I'm going to take you inside my head, which might be a scary place to go. And we'll start with what I started out with. And you can see this is pretty messy. And what I was thinking was I wanted a high contrast version. So what I really wanted was you know, sort of a black and white kind of deal. But what happened was when I started coloring these in, I lost control of my design. I mean, I lost the appearance of my design. So that wasn't working. And this one was done with paint. And even though the paint was labeled soft, it really wasn't soft. It feels scratchy. It's stiff. And when I painted over this area with red, because I thought, oh, what if I paint in a different area with red? Well, it covered over my thread. And so then you couldn't see the outline. So these were done with ink. And what I like about the ink is it's a little more translucent, and it feels soft. Now, what you can do um, when you're messing around with stuff like this is you can get one of these mirrors. This is called a magic mirror. And what it is, it's a hinged mirror. And I don't know if we can do this here, but let me see if I can do this and get this angle towards the camera. You can kind of see what's going on with your block and how it might look when you've pieced the whole thing together. So you can try this out, try different ones, maybe just try a wedge, see how that looks. It's probably not very easy to see on the camera, but these are really cool. You can get these from Amazon. So after I tried this, I thought, well, you know, I really don't like these colors, and I, I think I know what I want to do, so I did a trial again. So here's my second iteration. And what I've done here is I've stitched lines, and let's go back to this one because it's easier to see. I've stitched horizontal and vertical lines and diagonal lines and an outline. This outline is my cutting line. So it's also the line that I'm going to ink to. So I want to ink all the way out to this line. Now the diagonal lines and the horizontal and vertical lines, they represent my piecing lines. So they're representing what would be pieced on this hoop. So I know where to color for one thing and to give that little indentation. So when I did this one, I decided that um, when I was first doing it, that I should probably match the weight of my stitches to the weight in the design. And my design uses double runs and bean stitches. Bean stitches are a triple stitch, so forward, back, forward, forward, back, forward. But when I did that, for these lines, I decided it was too heavy. So on the next iteration, I decided I would just go with single runs. And I thought, well, maybe I should just do them in white, then they won't be so apparent. But when I filled this one in, what happened was that 
if you look at the points very carefully, you'll see that they don't look like they match. It's because I used white thread. And the white thread ends up being the outline for each box. So in the center here, I have white where it's all crossing over. And I didn't like that look. So at this point, I've learned several things. I need to make these piecing lines, which is these lines, the same color as the ink or the color that I'm coloring in. I need to color before I do my quilting stitches. And also, because I'm going to use a piece of you go technique, I can't do these lines, these piecing lines, as I'm calling them, all the way out to the basting box. They have to stop a quarter of an inch all the way in so that I have that fabric to turn. Because if I try to turn this, it's going to not be able to turn once I get to that stitching line. So yes, I've done two blocks already. One I've spent the time to ink in or paint in, and I haven't gotten a good one yet. So those of you that think we designers just sit down and make something and it comes out perfect, eh, hardly ever. Sometimes if you get lucky or the project's simple, but a lot of times we're kind of still thinking through the project as we work through it, as we stitch it, as we color it, and then we get to where we're going. So what I came up with was this one. And I decided I like the purple better. Now, there's still a few problems that I've had. One is that I had a little bit of bleeding. So if you were to look carefully along the edges, you might see that my ink bled across my stitching line. And it's because I got my ink too thin. So you can't let your ink get too watery because it'll fade. Also, when I was trimming this one, I cut through my back. So when I was trimming away the batting, I accidentally cut my back. So there's another one down the tubes. This one actually made it into one of my table runners, but I noticed that it was puckered. And I thought, why is it puckered? And I realized I'd used polyester batting, and it uh, shrank when I, it actually melted. And so it shrank. And so in some of these places, it looks like cotton candy where it's been licked. It's just all melted into a little hard line. So yeah, I did a whole lot of blocks before I got a good one. Now what I'm going to show you next is how to ink the design. So what I'm going to do is I've actually stitched the first color. And I'm going to do this one in purple. So I've hooped my fabric with my top fabric, my batting, and my backing. And I'm just using white on the back. And I haven't noticed that the ink fades all the way through. So I'm not worried that my ink is going to go through the batting and soak into the back. But if your ink is really runny, you could have that problem. So you might want to think about what color you use for your backing fabric. Or you might actually want to put a layer of stabilizer in there to prevent it from seeping through to your backing fabric. So the next step is I'm going to ink. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink in um, every other every other pie section, and then the alternating outside sections. So I'm going to bring in all my ink stuff, and we'll start that next. So let's look at what you're going to need to ink this. Now I mentioned that I used some paint that said soft, and this is the paint that I used. You can get it at Joann's, and there are other paints that are labeled soft that are actually softer, and they didn't have that brand, so I tried this one. It's not really soft, so I don't recommend that. The inks, these are the inks. These are the three colors that I used for my project. The black is what I used for the black and white one. And then I use purple iris at midnight for the, the kind of purplish, the periwinkle colored one. And this is a very liquidy kind of ink, kind of like if you think back to when people use quill pens and dip their pens in ink. This is the consistency of water. It's very intense, though. So a little bit goes a long way. You're going to need some brushes, and I recommend a small flat brush and a larger flat brush. And if you're having trouble getting into corners, you can get a really teeny flat brush or even a small pointed brush. Now, Sukineko, which is the brand that these inks are, also makes these 
little sticks called Fantastics. And they're kind of like felt tip pens with no ink. And if you're not comfortable using a brush, you might try one of these, but they are very flexible on the end, so they're not much different than using a brush. And I don't really like them for inking, but I do like them for if I make a boo-boo, because what I'll do is I'll get some aloe vera gel, dip it in the aloe vera gel, and kind of scrub it into the fabric, and it will lighten up that area, and I can actually get rid if I've kind of smudged it with my finger or something. You're also going to need some aloe vera gel, and this is what you're going to use to thicken your ink. So you're going to measure out some aloe vera gel. And what I did was I used two tablespoons of aloe vera gel. Make sure it's clear. The brand really doesn't make any difference. This one came from Walgreens. And you're going to measure out the drops. And my poor palette knife has seen better days. It's lost its handle. And you're going to mix this very, very well. So it's very thoroughly mixed. And I already have my ink already mixed up in these little containers here. And then I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of water to make it the consistency of paint. So those are your goodies that you're going to need. Oh, you're going to need some paper towels too. So paper towels are handy. And now we're ready to ink. So I'm going to let the cameraman move in so you can see me ink. So I'm ready to start inking. And I have my little pot of mixed up ink in here. Make sure you mix up plenty because it's hard to match your colors even when you measure. So this is started out as two tablespoons of aloe vera gel, 30 drops of the, blue, the black iris, and six drops of the midnight, and then a couple droppers full of water. And as I'm working, because it takes me quite a while to do one of these, I do add a little bit more water to thin it down. If you get it too thin, you can always add a little bit more aloe vera gel. Now, if you're not comfortable using a brush, I recommend starting along this basting line because it doesn't matter if it bleeds into this other section. This will give you a chance to see if your ink is the right consistency and if your hand is steady enough. So you might not want to be drinking a lot of coffee. So I'm just going to get a little bit of ink on my brush and I'm just going to start brushing in. And I need a little bit more ink than that. And you can kind of go sideways like this, or you can kind of push it in towards the stitching line and pull back. Now what you want to do, though, is kind of brush out into the area so it's not a solid line. And you also want to do one whole section before moving on or before stopping. Because if you stop and your ink dries, then you can have kind of like hard lines through your ink. Now, if you just kind of pause for a minute or you're very slow at doing this and you start getting lines, you can take your little sticky thing, your Fantastic, or another brush that's a little stiffer and um, use some aloe vera gel and kind of scrub it in and that will help soften that line. So the ink goes on a little darker than it will be when it dries. You just keep working around. You can see I'm not too worried about this edge over here because this is all going to be cut off. So that's why it's a good place to stop or start and get your, get your brush hand in shape. I'm also not worried that I have a very even solid coverage. I like it kind of softly modeled. I don't want to see any stripes in there, but you know if it's not real solid then it looks kind of batiki like. Now right here we're going to have to figure in what our line is going to be because there's no stitching line there and that's because we need to fold this fabric back to get our seam allowance in there. So we're going to have to kind of fake it out to that line. So I'm going to turn my hoop around a little bit. And you want to be careful that you don't disturb the hoop tension. As long as you're working flat like I am, it won't be a big deal. So you won't disturb your hoop tension. So if you're trying to hold your hoop and put your fingers underneath it, you're going to distort that fabric tension 
and then when you start stitching the rest of your design, it is not going to line up. So I'm just going to keep painting in this whole section and I won't make you watch at my normal speed. I'll just speed up the video and make it look good. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a kind of a line going along in here. And I think it's because these lights are pretty hot. And so this is drying faster than I would actually like it. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to cover up my paint or my ink. I'm going to dip in my little sticky thing into some water. And I'm going to try to rub that out a bit. little bit more ink on there. And we won't really know how it'll look till it dries, but all likelihood it won't be that noticeable with my embroidery on top. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish doing all these other segments and we'll come back when I'm done. So I finished doing my inking and it's still pretty wet so it looks very unevenly colored. And what you can do is you can speed the drying before you finish sewing with the hair dryer. So what I like to do is I'll use the hair dryer and I'll see if there are any spots that are really too light or too dark that I need to touch up. And if they're too dark, I'm just going to take my um, little acrylic brush and scrub it with some aloe vera gel. And if it's too light, like maybe right down here it's really light, I might go over that with a little bit of ink and just kind of rub it in. So when it gets to the color you like, you're ready to put it in the machine and finish doing your embroidery. So I did notice a few things. This is a different fabric than what I used before. Before I used Kona cotton, which is a pretty heavyweight cotton, and this is a little lighter, thinner cotton, and I noticed that even with the same mix that was perfect on the Kona cotton, I got a little bit of bleeding on this that I didn't have on the Kona cotton. So you may want to test your fabric on a little swatch to see what happens before you use it on a block. Another thing uh, is that on the black, I actually went over it twice. So I did make sure that it was really, really heavy on the black version because I wanted a really bright, solid black. I'm not too worried if this is not an, un an if this is a little uneven because I like that kind of softly mottled color. So this is how you do the inking. It's really easy. It does take a little bit of time. But what I'll do next is I'll let this sit overnight, let it sit 24 hours actually, and then I'll heat set it with an iron, and then it's permanent, and you can wash it. Now I probably will wash it because I've got this aloe vera gel in here, and it does make it feel a little stiff. And when you wash out the aloe vera gel, you can barely feel the difference between the fabric and where it's been inked, and it is permanent. So I hope you give this a try. It's very easy. The inks are economical, and you can get them on Amazon.